Hello, I'm Professor Kent Pinkerton. I'm a core scientist at the California National Primate Research Center here at the University of California, Davis. I am a member of the Respiratory Disease Unit and today we're here at the Respiratory Disease Center talking about the new capacity that we have to do inhalation studies um, at the Primate Center. This facility represents uh, a really amazing facility that is state-of-the-art that allows us to do inhalation studies that could not be done beforehand. Our exposure core uh, that consists of inhalation chambers are designed to allow for the generation of atmospheres, of gases, of particles that um, may be areas where we have interest in studying criteria air pollutants and their potential health effects. And here we have a walk-in exposure facility that allows us to be able to create atmospheres that would mimic what could be found in the home or the workplace and be able to test what those health effects are on non-human primates. In a similar manner, this exposure facility is designed to be very flexible that uh, we can also introduce black carbon, wood smoke, or the generation of particulate matter. We've actually learned through working with investigators in the behavioral unit, uh, in particular Dr. Mari Golub, that uh, infants that have been exposed in utero and during the first month of life to secondhand smoke at extremely low levels, that these concentrations led to a significant deficit in cognitive development. These animals went on to, to um, uh, be older animals with, that we looked at and we actually found that there were uh, clear examples of immune um, dysfunction. And we learned that through our studies of using non-human primates. Although mice, rats, and monkeys, and humans uh, behave in the same manner when you're exposing them to an environmental stressor or pollutant such as secondhand smoke. What we found is that the response in the rats was significant, but the response in monkeys was on the order of 15-fold to 200-fold higher than the response that we saw in, in rats. And so if I were to place a bet and say what is more representative of human conditions, I would trust more our findings in monkeys than I do in rats. We know that here in the state of California that we've made tremendous progress towards having cleaner air that leads to a better quality of life, but we also know that we still don't understand completely the mechanisms by which particles or gases produce their health effect. Without having a primate center and an inhalation facility here in, at the University of California, Davis, we could not be able to address questions such as these. It's important that we um, use our time, our resources wisely, that we perhaps start with uh, small animals such as mice or rats, but if we really want to understand what are the true health effects in humans, that the the selection of monkeys is really a critical step in that process of learning what those mechanisms may be.